Whistler. Presented by the United States Air Forces in Europe. I'm the Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now, the Whistler's strange story, Hudson Bay Incident. It all began at a secret international business conference at the exclusive Hudson Bay Hunting Lodge between two important men, Elliot Bradley of the Bradley Metal Processing Company, and Bernardo Nagashi of the Middle Eastern Metals Limited. A conference which also included handsome, suave Charles Reeves, personal secretary to Elliot Bradley. Yes, you've been present at many important conferences with your employer, haven't you, Charles? And you've learned many important facts, facts you expect to turn to your own advantage very soon, with the assistance of your employer's attractive wife, Pauline Bradley. Yes, Pauline can be a big help to you, can't she, child? You smile as you complete the final arrangements for the conference between your employer and the important Bernardo Nagashi, a conference you're certain will change the course of your life. Uh, give me the lodge guard's office, will you, please? Chief of Guards, Kincaid speaking. Oh, Kincaid, this is Reeves here. Uh, look, there's been a change of plans. Mr. Nagashi is not coming up by car. You see, we heard that he hated to fly, but uh, he just wired that he's coming in from Washington on a chartered plane anyway. Better send the limousine to the airport right away. Yes, Mr. Reeves. Uh, what about the reporters? Reporters? Yes, sir. Several of them are here. Oh, but this conference was supposed to be a well-kept secret. Well, how do you suppose they found out? I wouldn't know, Mr. Reeves. Mr. Bradley's arranged for a few hours of hunting with Nagashi before the business conference. Right, Mr. Reeves. Well, I'm tired of being kept in the dark. What's this all about anyway, Charles? Well, I'm sworn to secrecy, Mrs. Bradley. You'd better ask your husband. Yes, I can tell you now, Pauline. Britannium. Oh, the rare metal, Elliot. Yes, we need it desperately for our defense production. And where does Mr. Nagashi fit in? Uh, his outfit, Middle Eastern Metals, controls most of the world's production, and they're selling it behind the Iron Curtain. And we've got to stop it. That's why I'm meeting Nagashi. And just what are you supposed to do? Get the Britannium for ourselves. Nagashi wants certain patents that we control. So I'll put it on the line. The patents in return for all of Middle Eastern metals Britannium. Well, what are all the guards for? Somebody might just try to get Nagashi and pin it on me. And that would kill our chances of ever getting the Britannium. Well, with all this going on, you're quite the man of the hour, Mr. Bradley. Mm. Oh, uh, may I suggest that you'd better go on down to the main lounge and talk with the reporters before Nagashi arrives? I'd certainly like to know how they found out about this meeting. You coming along, Reeves? Oh, why don't you let Charles stay here and keep me company? Very well. I'll be back in a few minutes. I thought he'd never leave, Charles. I know, darling. Well, tell me, is it good news? Are you going to get away? Yes, I've arranged it with Elliot. Ah. I'm leaving tomorrow for a vacation. I'm staying at my sister's in Upper New York. That won't be too far away, will it? No, of course not. We'll have a wonderful time together. Oh, there are a hundred out-of-the-way places I want to show you. I wish we were there now. Me too. Elliot means well, but... Oh, I'm so tired of his everlasting committees, business meetings, receptions. I just can't take it anymore. I'm going to buy a whole new wardrobe. I'm beginning to feel 16 again. <laughs> Say, you don't think Elliot suspects anything, do you? Well, I don't care if he does. I want him to know. No, no, we have to be sensible, Pauline. My promotion papers are in Elliot's briefcase. All they need now is his signature. Is that so important? It means my whole career. Besides, if he knows about us, you'll never get a cash settlement out of him when you file for divorce. I don't want one. I've decided I'm not touching Elliot's money. I think you're making a mistake, Pauline. 
Why, Elliot owes you something for all those years of drudgery. I'm leaving him, Charles. He owes me nothing. He's done his best to make me happy. He just doesn't understand that it takes more than success to make a woman happy. But, Pauline, all our future plans... Look, we might as well face it now, Charles. Which comes first, your career, cash settlements, or me? Well, you do, darling, of course. Well, then, I'm going to tell him. Oh, look, let's not quarrel, Pauline. There's no hurry. Oh, come here, darling. Oh. Charles. I want to be as honest as I can to Elliot. I know. You do understand. Of course I do. Now, we'll, we'll discuss it later. Now, let's be careful. Elliot's due back any moment. Now, you won't do anything till then, will you, darling? Well, I won't promise that, Charles. It's my decision. Oh, uh... Well, uh, how's the press briefing, Mr. Bradley? Short and to the point. We better get ready. The limousine is coming up the drive with Mr. Nagashi now. A drink, Mr. Nagashi? Uh, no, thank you, please. Afterwards, yes. But now I am most anxious to begin the hunt which your husband arranges for me. Well, then why don't we get it started? Here's our gun rack, Mr. Nagashi. You just take your pick. Thank you. I I like this gun, Mr. Bradley. Mm -hmm. It's the same model as my own. Well, I'm glad you like it. So, shall we get started? The Jeep's out and back, sir. Then lead the way, Mr. Reeves. I, I understand you Americans are a great marksman. I am most anxious to see for myself. <laughs> Certainly got Nagashi in a good humor. He's nailed a half a dozen rabbits. Now he wants a deer. Yeah. He seems to enjoy hunting immensely. Lucky he does. You're still going to find him a tough man to deal with, I'm afraid. <clears throat> well, uh, where to now, Mr. Bradley? Oh, Reeves, Reeves. Drive over to that clump of trees and brush. I'd swear I spotted a deer. Yes, sir. There goes Nagashi. Over there. I see him. There are two of them. Bradley! Bradley, stop! Nagashi's right in your line of fire! Say something for heaven's sake. Nagashi's dead. Huh? Oh, no. No, he can't be. Reeves, you don't know what that means. Yes, Mr. Bradley. I know exactly what it means. a stroke of luck you hadn't expected, isn't it, Charles? And as you help Elliot Bradley carry Nagashi's body into the Jeep, you see a way to speed the completion of your own plans. Bradley's accidental shooting of Nagashi can be turned immediately to your advantage, can't it, Charles? Outwardly, of course, you still remain the obedient and sympathetic personal secretary as you follow Bradley's instructions to the letter. <laughs> You have all his personal effects? Pistol, handkerchief, wallet, and passport, all here. All right. Leave them on my desk when you get back. And now remember, we can't let any of the reporters get wind of what's happened. Not yet. Right. I uh, don't think they can see us from the main lodge. Well, I hope not. I'll drive the body back to one of the rear guest houses. You walk back to the house. Phone Kincaid and have him meet me there as soon as possible. Yes, Mr. Brad. <laughs> Kincaid, this is Reeves speaking. Mr. Bradley wants you over here right away. It's an emergency. What's happening, Charles? Elliot killed Nagashi what? while we were hunting. Oh, no. Yes. 
And Elliot's shot is going to be heard around the world. Where is Elliot now? He's on his way here. Oh, I'd better get the note I wrote him. He mustn't read it at a time like this. What note? About us. I just couldn't face him and tell him you and I were in love. I thought it would be easier if I wrote him a note. But I told you to wait, Pauline. Oh, never mind that now. I left the note on his desk. I bet... Oh, Elliot. Hello, Pauline. Oh, Elliot, I'm so sorry. I know how you must feel. How I feel doesn't matter. It's the consequences that count. I'm a hated word to most of Nagashi's company as it is. There are plenty of enemy agents working inside this company ready to blow this whole thing up into a sinister plot. And there goes Britannium. That's what I'm afraid of, Reeves. I put through a call to Kingston in Washington while I was at the main lodge. No, oh, that's probably Kingston now. Hello. Yes, this is Mr. Bradley. Oh, Mr. Kingston's not in, huh? Well, keep trying, operator. Yes, this is urgent. Who's expected soon? Thank you. Thank you. Well? He's flying in from a conference in Bermuda. Won't be back till six. We'll just have to wait. Would you like a, like a drink, Elliot? Yes, yes, I could use one. Hmm. What's this note here on my desk? Oh, uh, I forgot to give it to you this morning. It's not important. Well, I might as well read it. Keep my mind from Nagashi and no, Titanium. No, please don't bother. You can read it later. Here's your drink. Thanks. Here's the door, Reeves. Yes, Mr. Bradley. Oh, this way, Mr. Kincaid. Mr. Bradley, you sent for me? Yes, Kincaid. We're faced with an emergency. While we were hunting, Nagashi was accidentally shot, killed. I won't go into details, but we're sitting on a powder keg and we just can't let it go off. Now... I want you to keep the road from the lodge under constant guard and be sure that none of the reporters leave, understand? I'll, I'll take full responsibility. All right, Mr. Bradley. Thanks, and, uh, oh, just to be safe, you better have the press phones uh, go out of order. If you say so, Mr. Bradley. And arrange to have dinner served the reporters at 6.30. Tell them it's important for them to remain and... Oh, never mind, I'll tell them that myself. Yes, that's all, Kincaid. Right, Mr. Bradley. Well, what now? I don't know, Reeves. I don't know. You can't keep this secrecy up very long, you know. Keep it up until we hear from Washington. And what can they do? I don't know that either. But there must be some way out. I can't let thousands of pounds of britannium get into the wrong hands because of my stupidity. Well, it's not your fault, yes, Elliot. Yes, yes, it is. Oh, if I could only think. Maybe... What about suicide? You'd stand behind me, Reeves, wouldn't you? It's not for myself, you understand that. Oh, no, suicide won't work. Why not? The bullet went through his back. It'd be impossible for Nagashi to shoot himself in the back. Yes, you're right. Well, I better go out and stall those reporters. Forget them. That's wasting time, Bradley. Mm -hmm. There is one person who can get you out of this. Oh, who's that? Me. What? Well, I'm in no mood for games. I'm not playing any. All right, then. What do you have in mind? There were only two of us with Nagashi. Yeah, I know that, I know that. Get to the point. All right. I could say I shot him. Gosh, his company never heard of me. Yes. Yes, that's it. At least it, it would give us a fighting chance. Your name means nothing to them. They couldn't blow you up into an international incident and make it stick. Exactly. And it would save your reputation. Well, I don't care a snap about that now. Oh, no, of course not. You're only concerned with Britain. Charles, I don't want to argue. If you go through with this, I'll be eternally grateful. Let's leave it there. Well, that's not quite enough. What do you mean? My promotion, for one thing... We've gone through that before, Charles. Uh, that was before. And the same reason still hold you don't have the maturity of the experience to be a division chief. Now, in time... In time, the time is now, Bradley. Ah, I see. No, not quite. I'm not finished yet. You just bought 5,000 shares of preferred stock in the company. You'll sign that stock over to me. Charles, how can... Keep out of this, Paulie. Now I'm warning you. You don't know what you're saying, Reed. Oh, don't I? What's that quotation? Power falls to the man who has the courage to be merciless? In other words, blackmail. Why, Don't I'll... start anything, Bradley. Remember, I'm your only witness, and if necessary, I'm prepared to swear you lost your temper and killed Nagashi deliberately. Are you? Don't, Elliot. That's just what he wants. You're right. I have to keep my head. I'll answer it. Hello? Yes, just a moment. It's Kincaid for you, Elliot. Uh, yes, Kincaid. Huh? All right. I'll be right over. 
Well, what was it, darling? The reporters are climbing all over Kincaid. I have to go out and talk to them. In the meantime, Reeves, you'll have a chance to change your mind. Thank you, Bradley. But don't count on it. As Elliot leaves to see the reporters, you casually walk over to the bar and mix yourself a scotch and soda. You're in a perfect position, aren't you, Charles? You know Elliot is growing more desperate and that he'll soon have no choice but to accept your terms. You'll have the position and wealth you've always wanted. You're not at all worried about Pauline now, are you, Charles? You're sure you don't need her anymore. And you're almost amused as she comes toward you, her eyes blazing with anger. That was low and vicious, Charles. No matter how we feel, Elliot is a fine man. He doesn't deserve that kind of treatment, especially from you. Well, the loyal little wife. Charles. Charles what? You're a great one to be preaching sermons to me. Don't talk that way. Oh, why not? What did you do the minute your husband's back was turned? That's a nasty thing to say. I was in love with you, you know that. Was? Yes. Past tense. Oh, I see. I wonder how many times you've played this little game before. Why, you... Ah, oh, that slap won't help. You don't like the truth, do you? It was a lie. A despicable lie. Oh, was it? I suppose you really believed I wanted to marry you. What? Oh, I see. I was just a pawn in your little game. First, you wanted to become Elliot's personal secretary. And then you wanted the promotion and the cash settlement. You were just using me, weren't you, Charles? What a fool I've been. Well, you don't have to keep on being one. Hey, look, Paulie. Oh, forget it. How did it go, Elliot? Not good, not good. The reporters are getting suspicious. They want to see Nagashi. Well, you don't have much time, Bradley. I didn't ask for your advice. You're waiting for Washington, aren't you? They can't save you from a murder charge. I'm the only one that can do that. I don't do business with a knife at my throat. But it's there all the same, Bradley. I prefer to ignore that fact. Pauline... Yes, darling. What, what did I do with that note I found on my desk? Oh, oh here it is in my overcoat. Oh, please, Elliot. I'd rather you didn't read it now. <laughs> Why not, Pauline? It's so amusing. Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. It's all right with me if you never read the note, Bradley. <laughs> not worried, are you, Charles? You're certain that once Elliot Bradley talks with Washington, he'll have no choice. He'll be forced to accede to your demands and say nothing. As Elliot and Pauline make a half-hearted attempt at conversation, you sit smoking cigarettes, waiting for the phone call from Washington you're certain will come through at any moment. After about 20 minutes, as Elliot quickly reaches for the phone, you silently lift the extension phone. Open your notebook. Prepare to make your usual notes of the conversation. Elliot Bradley speaking. Washington calling Mr. Bradley. Yeah, put them on. Hello, Mr. Bradley. Yes. This is Lester Shaw, manager of Mr. Nagashi's American office. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Shaw. I'd, uh, I'd like to speak to Mr. Nagashi, if you don't mind. Uh, well, he is uh, not available at the moment. He, uh, he went hunting. Oh, I see. Mm. Well, then, would you tell him that we received a coded cable from our board of directors this afternoon? A special messenger is on his way to the lodge to deliver it to him personally. He should be there any time now. Yes, I'll tell him. Thank you. Good day. Good day. What is it, Elliot? Bad news. A messenger's on his way up here to see Nagashi. Well, Bradley? All right, Reeves. All right, you win. No, don't do it, Elliot. Don't do it. I have no choice, Pauline. I can't risk our whole defense production to stop one cheap little crook. Yeah. Here's your briefcase, Bradley. Sign the necessary papers and be quick about it before I change my mind. You get the door, Pauline. No, no, no. Sit still, both of you. Let me answer it. It'll be my last official act as your private secretary, Bradley. <laughs> certain now that you've won, aren't you, Charles? 
that in a few minutes you'll have 5,000 shares of the valuable metals company's stock and also get your promotion to division chief. As soon as the messenger from Nagashi's Middle East Metals Company arrives and learns that Nagashi has been killed, Elliot Bradley will quickly sign the papers necessary to complete the deal that you forced him into. And the beauty of it is that Bradley can never reveal the fact that he was blackmailed without also revealing that he killed Nagashi. You smile smugly to yourself as you answer the doorbell. Oh, hello, Kincaid. What can I do for you? I have to see Mr. Bradley right away. Well, Mr. Bradley's busy at the moment. I'll speak for myself, Reeves. What is it, Kincaid? Well, frankly, sir, I don't know what to make of it. Here, see for yourself. Bring him in, man. Get your hands away from me. Who is Mr. Bradley? I am. Are you the special messenger? Messenger? I have never been subjected to such outrageous treatment in my entire career. First, you canceled our engagement this morning and asked me to arrive at 6 this evening. And now this. But you must be mistaken. I am not mistaken. What kind of mongering is this? I have your telegram in my correspondence file. I am holding you and your company responsible. Just who are you? Oh, the final insult. I am Binardo Nagashi, here at your invitation, Mr. Bradley. It's impossible. Out of his mind, Bradley. Keep quiet, Reeves. Uh, your passport, please. Oh, dear, you are... I suppose you, you'll search my luggage next, huh? I, I'm sorry, but I must insist on seeing your passport. Very well, but I give it to you under protest. Here. Now are you convinced who I am? Well... No, not yet. Uh, Pauline, hand me that other passport. It's on the desk next to the gun and the handkerchief. Yes. Here it is, Elliot. Thank you. Well, this passport has your name in it, too. And look at the identification photo. Uh, a forgery. It is Kim Son Konoye. Where is this man now, huh? Dead. He was shot today by accident while we were out hunting. Thank heavens. Forgive me, Mr. Bradley. But we were almost the victims of a daring and clever plot. Yes, yes, I see it now. He sent you a telegram to delay your arrival, then wired us he was coming in by plane. This Konoye was one of the Middle East's cleverest agents. He was here for more than information, Mr. Bradley. He didn't want me to return alive. The Whistler. Listen next week when, once again, the United States Air Forces in Europe present The Whistler. The Whistler has come to you through the world...